Baby doll, welcome back. You're looking groovy. Yeah, I went through a lot of finance content. None of them were useful. <laughs> oh, man. So, look at this. Before I discovered crypto, people suggested I read the books from the greatest out there. Okay. So, I did. And it taught me nothing. Nothing! In crypto land, we step into the moonshot casino. Embrace it. Embrace it. Welcome it with your open arms. We are not risk-free. We are not blue chip safe boomer land. You want the risk. You want uncertainty. Because people are selling because they feel bad. Imagine you were out to buy a car and someone saw an offensive advertisement from Ferrari on television and they were like, yeah, I can't stand to look at this car. Ferrari used the male model who was not wearing the socks I thought he should be wearing. And that person would have a higher chance of just getting rid of the car below fair value just because they don't like it. If you're a human, welcome. You know, we do things in the extremes of our emotion that are very irrational. Some guys hop on a plane to go meet up with a girl halfway across the world. You know, like, friends, <laughs> if you need some help, I can always wingman for you, please. You don't need to go on a plane, okay? Also in crypto, we see people, they'll just realize it's been 12 months of down-only price action. So they'll sell just because they just hate themselves in the mirror. See, two extremes. Okay? But in crypto, the community, it's us, friendship, what me and you have right now, that's the actual asset. That's the power. And you're not going to find this in Boomerland because the low-hanging fruit is already eaten up. So that's why I'm all in on crypto. The Wolf of Wall Street, it was a cool story, you know? Very oriented to young males, partying, all that stuff, you know? It was very interesting how Jordan Belfort found an edge and he milked it. That was the important lesson of the story. But you probably see the boat and some helicopter and he bangs some chick and he doesn't know what's going on. Yeah, that's fun. I've been there. It's really fun. But you know what's more fun? Winning. Because not everyone can win. Okay? You can't be born winning. But you can try to get an edge in the most fastest bleeding tech thing we've seen since the internet. The book on the right is The Intelligent Investor by Benny Boy Graham. Now, I forgot absolutely everything in the book. I got no idea... <laughs> I don't remember anything, okay? Just remember, I was like, nah, man, stocks are so trash. It's trash. There's formulas, margin of safety. They go through different elements in this book. Benny Boy Graham, you know, this is what taught, basically, Warren Buffett. It's very cool to see a perspective. Do you know what's really crazy? People in the stock market, they don't actually know, most people, that the whole meme of stocks themselves, they stem down from this book. How people think about stocks. It comes from Warren Buffett, the guy on top. He goes, oh, I see it as owning a piece of value. You know, there are different ways to look at this stuff, right? But no, it doesn't cross anybody's mind because they're like, well, this guy's the richest and he got there on top. So I'm telling you right now, if you find the winning paradigm that breaks away from this, you kill it. And that's why you're listening to me. I love you. You love me. Our friendship is eternal. Four hearts of friendship and justice. We're in crypto, man. We've made it. People in stocks, they are valuing stuff based off PE, price earnings. So they say, okay, well, theoretically, you know, if the earnings represented the balance sheet of the company, how many years would it take to recoup my investment? Right, So a PE 
of 20 means it takes 20 years of whatever you made in the year to get me back my money. So I own a full ownership unit. So a PE of 20, you just do one over 20 to get your yield, you get 5%, right? So yeah, it's the same thing. Same thing as crypto with a twist. They're all about the PE. They're all about the cash flow. So you can't step into the world of stocks and say, I don't care about PE, right? You can't do that. You've got to learn the rules of the game first. Before we conquer them, we have to see how they think. We've got to watch them like a hawk. You have to understand how are they thinking. Yes, I'm a peanut brain. You're a peanut brain. Look at this. I just knocked on my head. There's literally nothing inside. Nothing. But you've got to respect how they think. So you know not to do the same. If you've noticed in crypto, there are people who value this little coin called Ethereum. They use a price to earnings ratio on it. And I mean, I'm split between it. On one hand, it's a crock of hocus pocus. Don't pay attention. But on the other hand, I know why they're doing it. It's a good way to trick those Wall Street people into getting into crypto. <laughs> Friends, I'm telling you right now, that's literally the game. The game is to get everybody in the world to start opening up the money in their wallets and come to buy. That's it. The game theory of crypto is now that I can buy, own, transfer value assets on the internet, then that's it. All the possibilities basically say I should be focusing my time and attention to that. That's what most people are going to do. Of course they will. We haven't even seen what's going to happen to social media once you introduce Web3 to it. Buying and selling of assets. In-game assets, metaverse assets. I'm telling you, it's going to change the game because now, think about it. Why would you sit there permanently wasting your time when you can be trying to add value for yourself? Right Now, not everyone's going to do it. Some people are just fatty boombers. They sit on the couch, they eat potatoes, and they don't want to do anything else. And yeah, man, yeah, I love potatoes too. I love potatoes. And what are you going to do about it? But think about 100 people in a room. Not all of them are going to be fatty boombers eating potatoes on the couch. Some of them might be a, a duck named Greg who may or may not want to add some value out there in the world and they get some cool ideas because everybody who's buying and transferring assets, right, because that's what the blockchain lets us to do, that opens up a lot of doors. You get to see what's going on. See, this is a completely different mindset to this ancient way of stocks. Price to earnings. We are networks. Now, if you want to know why, so I'm not saying, oh, none of the rules apply to us. I'm not saying that, okay? Because it's a very easy trap to go into because you will see my post and it, it, the stock market boomer guys will be like, oh my God, this guy doesn't know what he's talking about. He just thinks the paradigm's new for crypto. No, that's not how it works. Firstly, change your accent and don't ever talk like that again. And secondly, I'm going to show you exactly what's going on here. You see, if you have a big network, it's exactly like if you had a megaphone, okay? You have access to a megaphone, all right? And in, the, in this network, you have like literally 100 people. And there's going to be, are there people here? Oh my God, there's two guys here. All right, sweet. So... This megaphone can talk into this house. This is an actual house, all right? This is an actual house right here with a little cute little chimney and there'll be some smoke and there's a little door here. So in this house, there's 100 people. You have access to the megaphone. That's what the network is. You can tell them anything. You can tell these people, buy my makeup, buy my coin, buy my JPEG, come sign up here. Hey, watch me do a handstand to show my boobies. You can tell them anything. And yes, you can tell them that you've got the fluffiest socks in the world and they can't do anything about it. But you need to get the 100 people in the house first. That's the network. That's the value. So when I say these, I'm like, you know, it's a new paradigm now. It's not really it's a new paradigm. It's just because the internet, which me and you are using right now, the internet, the cost of transferring information 
is so low that competition has now opened up. See, the market is front running this PE dissolving stuff, okay? The market is valuing networks, but why, why? Well, you know the answer why, man. It's because networks are a group of people and all you need is one megaphone to shout words into their ears and you have power there. So the market is now opening up to the fact they go, oh my God, it's not that the company itself has value, but it's actually the willingness of the group of people who are bound together to act. So the market is smarter than me, you, he, him, they, the, pet duck, okay? The market's smarter than us. The market's always right. Why did the market pump Amazon the way it did, all right? Amazon, let's go check it out. Amazon, one of the golden stocks, right? One of the golden poster childs for this. Amazon's network around the world grew, okay? Look at this. Just a night tick to the, to the moon, right? It dropped 90%, kept going up and up, like up to the moon. Why? Amazon started putting the supply distribution centers everywhere around the world. Its network effect started growing and growing and growing. This is what every tech company's vision is. They want to keep the network effect growing. Everything's a freaking network. If you can get a network because the cost of transferring information is so low, you can shield your network anything. Anything. And you better believe I really do mean everything. And anything. That's why networks are the new frontier. There's no geographical location that you have to worry about now. We are all digits on a screen. So I'm sharing this message with you because I can see it. And I'm not a genius. I'm just here 18 hours a day, man. I figured it out. I figured it out. I'm here to share it with you. So before you go and just like, you know, flip flop around, flipping your flapjacks and you don't know what to do with your crypto portfolio. Some people want to go back to stocks. We are the front team, man. We are the new stocks. See, people in stocks, they think, oh, I have ownership of this company. Habibi Albi. No one cares, man. What does your McDonald's share let you change on the McDonald's menu? Nothing. You are insignificant. Just accept it, right? But people in stocks, they follow the Warren Buffett mean. What did I say at the beginning of this video? I said, you know, it stems down from the top. Warren Buffett was like, oh, you got to treat every share like you own the whole company, man. Maybe that works for the people with like more than 1% ownership, but that's not going to work for the bottom tier people, for us, the peanuts, okay? You hear that? The peanut brains. That's not going to work for us. So there's going to be constantly decaying value from that ecosystem to a place where we belong. And yes, we belong here. So that's why Amazon moved the way it did. And that's why I'm sharing with you. That's why. You got this megaphone, 100 people here. Now, in crypto, everybody is trying to make their people, you know, 100 a thousand people. They're trying to make it as big as they can. That's why, have you noticed the community is the asset, not the code? It doesn't actually matter what the hell the code is. It just matters that you have more amount of people. Use the network, just do something. You know, my final message friends, because I love you all, a little coin named Hex, right? Hex is often knocked and ridiculed by the COPA Society of Crypto, the Soy Drinkers Association, known as Reddit, because they say it's got no utility, does nothing. And this is the funny thing, because they are in open relationships and their girlfriends are bagging seven dudes and they're not allowed to touch anybody and they got to cook for her in the morning when she comes home all sweaty and slimy, because they live in that paradigm, they can't see that Hex is being used. <laughs> You are training hundreds of thousands of people and one day maybe millions to go to their website, click some buttons and participate in it. It doesn't matter what you think is valuable participation. That's why the people like me who don't judge, we have open hearts, open minds, we can see this. I'm here and sharing this with you. So don't judge. 
okay? You might not like that their Kim Kardashian has followers. You might not like that Conor McGregor has a lot of believers. You might not like Kanye West's music. There's a lot of things out there you might not like, but other people do. So I'm saying for you, right? Yes, maybe you don't have the fluffiest socks on right now. Maybe one day you will, but I'm telling you right now, there's 100,000 plus people thinking about this coin and shilling it 24-7. Think about that megaphone, friends. Until next time.